When we have an object that needs to be 3D scanned using photogrammetry, we can apply any number of possible workflows to get the best capture of it. We could, for example, walk around the object, shooting as we go. We could hang or suspend the object, walking around it. We can spin the object on a turntable and mask out the background manually. Or we can isolate it in the void. So the last one is what we'll be covering in this video today. Um, this video does assume the good knowledge of photogrammetry and asset capture, so be warned as we might jump into the deep end without much warning. So let's get into it. Welcome to the void, a place where objects float freely, away from noisy backgrounds and poor lighting, a place where there is no up or down, a place where geometry is perfect and our textures clean. A place where we see all of our objects equally, all round. Okay, seriously though, the void is a place where the subject is in an environment of constant colour, typically black, and the object should be sitting on a surface that is also the exact same colour as the background. The lighting of the subject is also consistent, uh, it's typically polarised, uh, due to the specular kicks that we can get off of some fabrics, uh, polarized light is far better. Um, so in essence what we're doing here is producing an image in which the object appears to be floating in space. Another way of describing this would be in the image masking. So how does the void work? Well, the void relies on a few things. A detailed subject, a background with no detail, a platform for the object to sit on, which again has no detail and matches our background, and a consistent light. You don't need a crazy studio for this type of work either, and some of the better scans I've done have been in pretty hostile environments. So take this rock as an example. Now here is one of the source images unprocessed, and here is an image I shot not long after I finished shooting that data set. So it's pretty crazy, right? So this just shows you that we can capture incredibly detailed full objects in pretty much any environment. Uh, the only caveat here is really having a light source that is powerful enough to outcompete the ambient light of the environment you're in. So let's go through a simple setup. We'll begin by setting up our background. For this I've hung up a black polyester blanket on the sea sand, it's going to be roughly one meter behind our subject. Next to the surface our object will be sitting on. I'll be using a Syrup Genie Mini as the turntable, and on the surface of the turntable I'll use a small cardboard tube with some dark adhesive black velvet stuck onto it. The object we'll be scanning in this example today will be None of these, actually. None of them. We won't be shooting any of these interesting looking subjects because today we're actually going to be shooting this apple. It's fairly simple and it's going to give a nice result and I think it will prove just why this technique works so well. So now we need to light our subject. I own both a Godox AR400 and a Flashpoint RF400 ring flash. They're identical in every way. It's beautiful battery powered ring flash that produces a lot of light as well as lasting a good amount of time. I can get upwards of 2000 images per battery. Now I've designed and built a very simple polarizer mount for this which I'll be using. This allows us to cut out any kind of specular reflections from our images. The fall off of the light will also be playing a large part in our scan. With the background receiving a fraction of the light our subject will be getting giving us a nice dark backdrop. Let's set up our camera now. I'll be using a Nikon D810 with a Nikkor 105mm macro. I have a polarizer mounted onto the front of the lens, which is vertically aligned with the flash. We now need to set up the exposure on the camera. So our goal is to expose to black without the flash. This means that if we were to take an image without the help of the ring flash, we'll have an image that just looks completely black. This means that any ambient light coming from the environment is no longer being recorded and we are only going to record the light that we are putting out with the flash. This allows us to guarantee great polarization. 
Before we kick off the scan, we have to take an image of a color checker. This allows us to grade our images, as well as check our exposures and our white balance. So let's scan this apple. We will do three passes of the object for optimal coverage, each time rotating it to expose previously unseen areas of its surface. So here we have our first pass done. If we look at our alignment, we can see that we have a full circular pass of our apple. But that's not enough. We're missing half of the other side. So let's rotate our object on the platform by 90 degrees or so to expose the previously unseen areas as well as the top and bottom. So as we can see, the alignment is looking perfect in terms of uh, camera lineups. And you can see that no matter how we place the apple, we aren't seeing the platform in the alignment. The two separate shoots with the rotation in between have produced a fantastic looking lineup with two perfectly concentric circles. But as good as this looks, we're going to add a third pass. This one will give us uh, just a slight amount more coverage on the stems and the base of the apple, as well as getting some more angles of some of the glossier surfaces to hopefully pull in some more details. So that third lineup worked beautifully. Uh, we can see we've got another concentric circle wrapping around our apple. So let's process our geometry on normal detail and see what we get. So the geometry is complete. Now I've also baked down textures at the same time and as you can see the final result is beautiful. Our textures look stunning. Uh, textures look incredibly flat. So this will produce a fantastic asset. So to start wrapping things up, the shooting style of removing all information about your object from your data sets is incredibly powerful. It provides an efficient use of your time, allowing you to spend more time capturing data and less time cleaning up poor data sets. If you want to try this out for yourself, you will need a black surface for your object to sit on. I highly recommend black adhesive velvet, as its albedo is incredibly dark. You also need a powerful polarized light source, an environment without too much light. Direct sun will not work, but an overcast day is perfect. An object which will not deform when moved. Now this is critical as your data set will break if your object can deform. You'll find yourself with alignment errors and poor geometry the second you move it as its shape changes. Now there are situations where this workflow will not work and while workarounds may exist this video is long enough and that might be a subject for another time. I think that wraps it up for today. Uh, be sure to leave a comment with any other topics that you may want me to cover in the future. And don't forget to subscribe for future videos. May your alignments be good and your textures clean.